Alright everybody, we're back again for more. Today's lecture is going to cover anaphylaxis, and to do this we're going to use a case to describe kind of the symptoms, and then uh, try and figure out what to do uh, once we see the symptoms. So, we have a 25 year old male that presents to the emergency room with a fast heart rate, uh, itching of his arms and his chest, and swelling of his tongue and then associated chest pain. He also states that he was stung by a bee about 20 minutes ago. So red flags are kind of going off in your mind. You're thinking, hmm, fast heart rate. Uh, I can also tell you probably low blood pressure uh, causing the fast heart rate. Uh, maybe itching of the arms and the chest, tongue swelling, chest pain. All, the, all of these are key characteristics for what? So what does this patient most likely have? Heart attack? Is it anaphylaxis? Could it be liver failure? Possibly a cocaine overdose? Or a panic attack? Well, if you were paying attention to the title slide, it would be to anaphylaxis. So let's, let's kind of explain uh, what you would see in a patient with anaphylaxis. Here are some of the signs and symptoms. Uh, regarding the skin, you'll see hives, uh, lots of itching, the puritis. You might see a flushing of the skin or any swelling, so swelling of the lips, of the tongue, uh, uh, really of any part. Um, you'll also see a patient in respiratory distress with shortness of breath, SOB, shortness of breath, um, strider. So the strider could be caused by uh, inflammation of the airways causing constriction uh, leading to a smaller airway so that would kind of induce the strider um, heart symptoms you would see an increased heart rate like I would said hypotension at the very end of this heart thing um, the hypotension the low blood pressure hypo low blood pressure would be causing this high heart rate because the heart is trying to compensate for that low blood pressure and then also in the middle here coronary spasm uh, anaphylaxis can cause your heart vessels to spasm, so they would constrict. This can actually lead to myocardial infarctions and chest pain. Um, it also affects your GI system, your gastrointestinal system, and you may experience pain, diarrhea, vomiting, uh, and cramp-like symptoms. And then finally, I, I had to emphasize this down here. You, you've already seen it. Uh, my favorite symptom of an anaphylactic shock is a generalized feeling of impending doom. And that's how they actually uh, cite it. And there's actually another disease, panic attacks, can also cause an impending sense of doom. So if, you're ever, if you ever have a patient that tells you, Doc, Doc, I have an impending sense of doom, uh, be thinking anaphylaxis or panic attack. So... What actually causes anaphylaxis? Uh, I listed here food, venoms, so like bee stings, for example, uh, insect bites. Uh, medications can also cause anaphylaxis. A uh, common one is a latex allergy. Um, and then also, you have these two down here, the temperature and exercise-induced anaphylaxis. These are kind of interesting to me. Uh, my wife, actually, I, I believe, has exercise-induced anaphylaxis because whenever she goes for a run or a walk, uh, she gets itchy uh, really all over, and it's more than just a mild itch. It's a, it's a very aggravated itch, um, but that's a side note. Uh, Exercise-induced exercise anaphylaxis is thought to do uh, dilation of the blood vessels under the skin due to a histamine release, an acute histamine release, um, or temperature may affect your cells causing histamine release. So. Down at the bottom, those with atopic diseases, so atopy, um, such as asthma, eczema, allergic rhinitis, uh, they're all at increased risk for specifically more food allergies. Um, so this brings us to question number two. What is the mechanism for anaphylaxis? Uh, I'm not the best at creating questions. I've kind of found that out as I was making this, uh, but let's, let's go through it. Is it IgG destruction of cells? IgG induced release of histamine, IgE direct destruction of cells, or IgE induced release of histamine. So this one's going to be a good one. This is a high yield, uh, high yield question here. 
What is the mechanism? It's going to be an IgE-induced release of histamine, and that's going to be specifically uh, from a certain type of cell, so let's, let's go over that. Um, I tried to break this down as simply as possible, and I know there are some people out there that's screaming at the screen, and they're saying, that's not it, that's not it. There's so much more to it. Well, well that's true. Um, this is as basic as you can go. It's anaphylaxis, anaphylaxis is simply uh, IgE attached to the mast cell, uh, which is also so the IgE binds the antigen and it's bound to the mast cell causing a degranulation of the mast cell and then also basophils um, causing the release of histamine so histamine ultimately gets released into the bloodstream causing your hypotension your bronchospasms uh, a whole bunch of other symptoms that we just covered um, there's also of note a non immunologic so the IgE mediated would be immunologic, your immune system. There's also a non-immunologic mechanism uh, that directly causes this degranulation of the mast and basophil cells. So uh, let's go through the process of how we actually get IgE on mast cells. I didn't write anything down uh, simply because I kind of wanted to talk through this part. Uh, what it is is your cells are exposed to an antigen which is just you know a particle on anything so food has antigen your body has antigen bacteria have antigen everything has an antigen antigen it's kinda like a marker like a biochemical like a biological marker that says hey I'm a bug hey I'm a liver tissue hey I'm a piece of apple um, as you can tell there's an apple right next to me I'm terrible with coming up with things off the top of my head so we have this antigen and the first time our body experiences that antigen, so if we've never seen an apple, never touched an apple for the first time, uh, and we eat an apple, possibly nothing would happen. Uh, and that's because your body really isn't prepared to react to that apple. Um, but once it does, once that, once your body is exposed to that apple and it, and it says, I don't like that antigen, that apple antigen, what it's going to do is it's going to stick a whole bunch of IgE uh, antibodies, immunoglobulins, onto mast cells and basophils. So they're going to attach, and they're going to attach via the uh, FC region. Um, and what and what's going to happen is the next time your body sees an antigen, now it's going to bind to those IgE sticky ends again, and it's going to cause the mast cell degranulation. I know this is extremely simplified, um, but that's that's pretty the basics of what happens. Your body sees the antigen the first time, it sticks some IgEs on mast cells, and those IgEs are specific for that, uh, for that apple antigen. So the next time, so the second time you encounter that apple antigen, uh, you will get a massive degranulation. And then also of note, the more subsequent, so the further on down the road, your third, your fourth, your fifth, your sixth exposure to that apple antigen, uh, you could possibly get either uh, the same or worse reactions. Uh, and that's something important as well. Treatment. So you see the patient in anaphylaxis that we listed above. Uh, what do you do? You give an EpiPen. So epinephrine is going to be the gold standard of treatment for anaphylaxis. Um, you may need to repeat that dose after a few minutes. Uh, you know, if, if the patient's really not responding after five minutes to your first epinephrine dose, uh, another epinephrine dose um, is probably indicated. Also, I listed here antihistamines, steroids, methylene blue. Uh, these are kind of other treatments that aren't proven. Uh, epinephrine really is going to be your gold standard. And then prevention is always the key uh, to prevent anaphylaxis. If, if you know you're allergic to a certain antigen, such as bee stings, or bee venom, or apple antigens, food antigens in general, just, just stay away from them. As always, Wikipedia is my friend, and then also my medical education helped me prepare this slide. If you have any questions, be sure to ask. Be sure to like if you enjoyed this presentation and subscribe for more. Otherwise, thank you very much.